Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the history of cheating in magic and why it is so prevalent even today. When I was younger, I just assumed everyone was cheating and that was how the game was played. Was everyone had cards in lap, everyone had cards up their sleeves, and it was more like magic than magicianing. Like you were actual magician slash we didn't have planeswalkers back in the day, but I mean, I guess we did, but they weren't cards. So we did have planeswalkers back in the day. And it comes down to this guy. This guy is the reason that there is so much cheating and magic. And articles he has written in the past in support for known cheaters has created a, oh, it's just magic. It's just a card game. Don't worry about it. But when the prizes get as high as $100,000 or $40,000, you, I'm a little more concerned because people are more likely to cheat at higher level events with more money. If the question is, why do so many magic pros get caught on camera for cheating? When did they know, hey, I'm on camera. I signed a piece of paper saying I would be on camera. I'm on Twitch and Twitch is going to watch my game. I'm still going to try to cheat. The average person, the average logical person would say, I'm going to cheat 99% of the time, but the 1% of the time I'm on camera, nope, not going to do it. Not average at all. And it's because the culture tells people that you can cheat. So you know it's going to be an interesting article when the number one is, I am not speaking for Wizards of the Coast. I like to start by stressing something that I should have stated up front last week. Normally, I use this column to speak on behalf of R&D and Wizards of the Coast. Most of the time, I am the official word or at least one voice of it. That is not the case with this Hall of Fame ballot. You can't have it both ways. You can't be the official word of magic and then when you want to be and then not when you don't. People recognize that you have a voice. People listen to that voice. And the large majority of people upvote anything he says. All the time. So then the argument is the criteria for the Hall of Fame is purposefully subjective. So we can allow a cheater in. Like Mike Long, a known person with very low morals, very caught multiple times this was before before youtube this was before i mean we had probably had youtube at the time but this was a long time ago videos were not really filmed it was maybe on espn sometimes it was the wild west and you had people sitting on chairs like mike long looking at people's hands from you know higher vantage point all types of just random, you have cards in lap was the most common cheat, which is still being used today, by the way. You got Saito, like messing with his opponents with mind tricks, right? A lot of really interesting things were happening around this time. To make the criteria of do you belong in the Hall of Fame and do people want to see you based on something subjective, and saying that he does belong because four of the five things that we grade him on are great. And then the one thing, which is ethics, is very poor, which he admits here. I'm voting based on what I believe the Hall of Fame represents. It is crystal clear from reading last week's Fred that many people feel that the Hall of Fame represents something different than I do. I cannot vote based upon the perception of other people. Hmm... Has any of his recent comments or recent Tumblr posts been about perceptions of other people? I think this is, again, this was a long time ago, but I'm trying to show you the mentality and just the culture. The culture of magic isn't developed today. It has existed for decades, two decades at least. I can only base my vote on how I perceive things, and to me, the Hall of Fame is about recognizing the stars of the sport. I am not judging them on what I think of them as people. I am judging them on the impact they made on the sport. So, there you go.
There you go. The stars of the sport, the star, stars of Magic the Gathering. No one's going to deny Alex Bocchini is a star. He's won multiple events. He does very well. And he's very recognizable and to all accounts very friendly. He is a star. So to protect our stars, we do everything to run everyone else over it. We'll let them cheat. We'll let them win. There is a line, he says, where pretty much he admits that cheaters are good for magic because they bring attention. We're going to get to that soon enough. Here, he's talking about the most significant competitors in the game. In my humble opinion, Mike Long fits that criteria. His role was significant and he was quite inferential. I'll spell this out in a moment. Many of fellow, my fellow co-workers, some were vote, some without, disagree with me as well. I respect that. You can't have it both ways. You can't be the voice of magic when it suits you and then be have your own opinions when it doesn't. You can't say, oh, I'm going to vote for Mike Long, but I respect people who don't like him. You can't have it both ways. So he looks at five qualities and you know he has this long explanation. Normally, when as long here's kind of the legal thing. If you have a very long explanation, it's very drawn out and very windy, you know it's a weak argument because you're not getting to the point. You're you're kind of buttering someone up to present a, a logical conclusion, which we'll get to soon. And you know what the correct answer is? There is none. Each voting member has to answer all these questions for themselves. And however they interpret the criteria, that is what the criteria is for them. So you have the old guard, and not many of them still exist, but Meryl definitely does. And Meryl is a very, very important figure in Magic today. When he posts on Reddit, it always goes top post. No problems. So when he posts about... You know, uh, Women in Magic, top post. He is not dumb. He, he's not dumb. He's a very smart individual. Uh, and like Tolarian, he writes very good scripts, right? That's what they do. They write scripts and it's well thought out. It's not like this video. It's made, he's using mnemonic devices here to convince his readers that Mike Long should belong in the Hall of Fame. Just like Tolarian uses mnemonic devices to convince his viewers to donate money. The script, if you break it down, if you break this down sentence to sentence and seeing the uh, pathos, ethos, and logos, I think it's logos, the logic, there is logic, there is emotion, and there's a path that they want you to follow. And, you know, from A to B, it seems logical. From B to C, it seems good. C to D, it seems good. And then D to E, it seems good. But then when you look at, wait a second, how do we get to voting a cheater in the Hall of Fame? Like, why, wait, what, why, why are we doing that? And when you look at from A to E, it makes no sense. But the route that you took, you know, you subjectively, as he, Mero would say, you subjectively agreed with him on some points. And then that's how you got to, let's vote this guy in the Hall of Fame. Here, we're going to rely on... People hated Mike, but they were drawn to watch him. One pro tour where Mike made top eight, another LA, I believe, I chose to start by filming a different match. The crowd nearly lynched me. I quickly learned the golden rule, show Mike, show Alex. There you go. There you go. Everyone always loves to go on and on about how they hated him, yet no one could resist watching him. You'd think people would shun him to make the point that they didn't like what he was doing, yet the opposite was true. Mike made people emotionally invested in the Pro Tour. Nothing gets people on Reddit faster than when Alex Porcini wins a game. Did he cheat? Did he not cheat? What was the cheat? I didn't see it. Nothing gets people more angry when Alex gets, you know, there's either a witch hunt or there's, you know, Alex got banned again. 
that drives a lot of interest in magic. Merrill is selling his soul to feed his ego, which is views, which is, and you might say MTG Lion's no different, and I, I, I'm not. I'm no different. The only difference is I'm not a cheater, right? But yes, I know what gets views. I know what does not. And Mero saying exactly what we all know about every favorite YouTuber you have. Go after the views. Even if that means support the cheater. So number four, I do not condone cheating. So understand how how do we get from let's vote mike long a known and most famous cheater in magic history into the hall of fame to i do not condone cheating it's a very interesting path of arguments and pro, uh, he's using he's using language and prose to get you to sympathize and empathize with him emotionally but logically which, I mean, you, you can't escape the conclusion that he's making. I voted for Mike Long. And then he has five criteria. And he says player performance. I don't question any of his criteria. I just question... A lot of times when I read his Tumblr, he, is, he gets hundreds of emails probably a day. And he picks certain emails with certain agendas. He doesn't need to pick this email. He doesn't need to pick this troll. It would be like I took a troll comment and I made it, I blew it up and we all just went after the troll. Like, yes, you, we are on the internet. Yes, I expect to get some comments where people don't like me. But no, I'm not going to, especially given his position, you see how it works. I am the face of magic. But in this case, I am not the face of magic. I don't condone cheaters, but I will vote for this known cheater who I admit to you is a cheater. I care about ethics, but this known cheater gets me views. It's a trade-off. You cannot have both, right? Do you want to say that... You know, do you want to say that Mike Long is a star? Yes, I'm not going to disagree with that. However, he did some really bad stuff. And like I said about Alex before, it affects everybody at that tournament. It affects whether or not people continue to play Magic. It affects whether or not people are enjoying their time. I would hate to play against Alex because even if he didn't cheat, I don't know. I don't know how good he is. You always question whether or not he did or not, right? Even if he, even if you beat him, he still might have cheated. And I don't want to have to question that. I don't want to have to go to my F and M and my pre release and realize everyone here is cheating because they look at pros and they're like, oh well, just you know, it's not a big deal, right? So then they go outside for quote smoke break and everyone comes back with a mono color deck. And re return to Ravnica, a guild base. Or everyone has a guild and the eight people come back and they have eight of the ten different guilds and they don't have any other cards except those matching the guilds. I just find it just um, appalling, really, and concerning that this is the leader. This is the person building the culture of magic He's trying to confuse you. This article, somehow we got to the point where, oh yeah, I guess Mike wasn't a bad guy. He just cheated a little bit. That's okay. For good or bad, Mike was an integral part of the Pro Tour for quite some time. For good or bad, Alex was part of Magic the Gathering history for some time. Nothing draws people more to Magic than Alex. But is that something that's good? According to Mero, that is something we should encourage. That is something that we have to support. 
I could have easily have taken the easy non-confrontational path. You could have. Anyway, that's it. Leave me a comment below. Bye.